Prophetess Carrie right now. They're beautiful, beautiful baby. They just had another one. They have two now, a boy and a girl. <laughs> oh, when y'all get um, uh, situated or whatnot, I'd love to do a live stream with you. That would be fun. Hey, Sherry, Angie, Lori, Cheryl, Peter. Who else is on here? Aaron and Lori. Um, Angie, Kimberly, Jenny, Leon, Timothy, I see Dallas on here. Thank you, Dallas. I'm headed to the gym after this, so I'm just like, I pulled it back. I said, what on earth would I be doing my hair for? <laughs> oh. Thank you. Hey, Jacqueline. Hey, Leroy. Hi, Nam. Janice Lynn. Hey, you guys. Sherry. Strong. Woo -woo. <laughs> I gotta get strong. I literally was feeling the drain and the lag in the atmosphere from um, the demonic. Oh, good. Yeah, I'd love to do one. Thanks. Hey, Colby. Hey, Cheryl. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to start out by thanking you, Father God. I thank you for everyone who's watching this morning. I thank you for those who are going to get a word in due season. I thank you for those who are uh, going to be seeing themselves coming up and out of the rocks, the places where it's been hard and they've labored and they've been plowing fields and they've had to stop to pick up rocks, Lord God. They've had to step over rocks. They've had to go around rocks. It, it's, it's, it was a very rocky field, Lord God, but now you put them in smoother, greener pastures. You put them in places where the harvest is coming in. They went from uh, being a very rocky place to a place that's now very fertile, very green. And Father God, we thank you that that manifests in the lives of our friends right now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Who? Oh, hey. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our husband. We thank you right now, Lord Jesus, that you are our friend, the bridegroom. Uh, we are not only your brothers, your sisters, but we're your wife. We thank you right now for wife benefits right now. We thank you that your belongings are our belongings. We thank you that our enemies are your enemies. We thank you that you are our king, our lord, our headship right now. We thank you that we walk with you. We're on your team and on your side. We thank you we've laid our desires down. We've died to the flesh and died to self, Lord God. I thank you for everyone who's watching right now that they have died to self that they are picking their skirts up so to speak of their tents that they are widening their uh, birth they're widening their girth come on they're widening their tent pegs they're widening their territories they're believing you for more and for greater they're leaping off of ships they're diving into deep waters come on they're leaping 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 over obstacles by sheer faith and will that they've allowed their will to your will lord god Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I saw that fire last night. It was like a, um, a, a fire from heaven came. And it began to untangle. Untangle what looked like uh, leads or things that were draining God's people. 
Alexa, decrease volume to three. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you to the person that set this up for me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Alexa can turn lights on, turn lights off. Ooh, I said her name. Now she's lowered Sorry, the music. I didn't find a device named lights. Anyway, can't talk about her. She can hear you. Anyway. <laughs> God is so good, you guys. He's so good. He's so good. You know what? I don't feel like I've prayed all of that out. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. You're welcome on this live stream. You're welcome in the homes and the job places of all of my friends right now. I thank you right now that your fire is literally going in and all of the roots all of these tentacles that have creeped into people's lives that's draining them, that's stealing life, very unnecessary life force from them, that it is, they are pulled out, they are uh, burned with fire, that they are shriveled up in a way that they go back to wherever it came from, Lord God. And if it came from the devil, then we say let it be multiplied with destruction, the fire that goes along those roots back to the enemy to destroy that thing once and for all. So it not only is out of this their lives, but even the lives of those they're connected to are from attacking anyone else in the future. So Lord God, we just bless your name. We praise you. We thank you for your healing angels on here this morning. We thank you right now for a new fresh fire. A new light has been sent out. Oh, oh I just see a greater measure right now. A greater measure. It's like it. many of you, you're looking at it going, this is new. It's new. It's a new light, but we know it is the light. It is Jesus and he he is not new. He is eternal. He's been here forever, but it seems new to us. And so, Father God, we thank you for a reviving of dead streams that should be alive. And we thank you right now for cutting off uh, streams that have tried to uh, take water sources, your pure water source, and dilute it and pervert it or cause it to... Uh, not be appropriate, Lord God. We thank you that those are dried up. They are cut off, dammed up, and no more shall the river of the Lord be drained off into nothingness, but instead it is a rushing mighty river in the lives of everyone on this live stream right now. Woo! We, your angels are welcome here. Angels that praise you, that worship you. God, we thank you. We bless your name. You're the deliverer. You're the father. You are the glory carrier, the glory carrier. You are glory itself. You are the glory. And we thank you for the privilege of carrying Holy Spirit on the inside of us. We thank you for manifesting your spirit right now in Jesus' name. Woo! Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Alexa, what's the name of the song you're playing? This is the secret place from Children of God by Phil Wickham. By Madison Cunningham. By Phil Wickham. It's the secret place by Phil Wickham. I love this song. I got hooked on this song this morning. But yesterday when those uh, tentacles that were draining me were hit by fire, and I saw this in many in the body of Christ, I literally began to feel supernatural strength infusing my body. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! There are many that are on fire right now. You're on fire by God. And there's some of you who know that there is a fire of hell that is uh, trying to burn you. Uh, but the fire of God is stronger. The fire of God is brighter in your life. Whatever is trying to cause dryness in your life or a withering or a desert, we rebuke that thing. We say the Lord rebuke you. Devil, come on. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is a time, a culmination of many prophetic words. If we look back over the past three years at the words the Lord has given and the words He's currently releasing, they're all interconnected. They're all interconnected, even some words from 20 plus years ago and even longer than that. But I'm telling you, we're all connected in the body of Christ. But I began to see, and this was quite some time ago, but I saw 
Leviathan out in the waters. And I saw this huge water system. And I said, Lord, what is this? And the Lord said, the water's from me. I said, well, what's Leviathan doing in it? He said, who can fish Leviathan out? And immediately I thought of the word uh, in the Old Testament where it says, who can? You know, anyone who messes with that thing soon learns, don't mess with that. Don't touch that thing again. They won't do that. Its scales are so tightly put together. You can't get a spear in there, etc., etc." Um and, but the Lord began to laugh and he said, who can fish out that thing? Who can fish out those that had aligned themselves with the Leviathan? Come on, who can fish out those who were the prodigals that were lost? Who were lost into the nations? Who were lost in the drug houses? Come on, who were lost? Maybe some of them are your very own sons and daughters. Come on. People you know might not be part of your family, but it might be. Aaron, that's wild. I love that. Thank you, Aaron. <sighs> but I saw these hooks on these long lines being dropped from heaven as the Lord laughed. And he said, who can fish Leviathan out? And he didn't mean necessarily the beast itself, but the people connected to the beast. He did mean um, putting a stop to the uh, devices of that thing in the lives of believers. Those who would listen. those who, Because, you know, and people have to agree with God to be set free. Come on, they have to see the error of their ways. Alexa, decrease your volume to two. And as these hook lines began to fall, they had these giant hooks on them. I saw what looked like giant alligators, giant um, dinosaur looking things being hooked. Hooked in their sides, hooked in their mouths, hooked in the jaw. Come on, wherever they could be hooked. God didn't care where they were hooked as long as they were hooked. Come on. Cheryl says she's seen this kind of stuff in a dream. And I began to hear the Lord yesterday as he told me, he said, the tribunal is in process. What does that mean? Judgment is falling on the head of that Leviathan thing in the lives of so many people. That's a, it can be a prideful spirit. Come on, it's accompanied by things like that. Humility and love are the only defenses against that thing. Come on. True humility, surrendering oneself to the Lord, surrendering oneself to the things of God, the ways of God, what God wants in the life of a believer. And then I saw sentences being handed down. Hey, Kim. Hey there, darling. When I began to see the sentences being handed down, there was some sadness, although most of it was great rejoicing and great joy. Why would there be any kind of sadness going on? Because some people didn't come out of agreement with that thing. Some people felt like, you know, they just continued to stay in agreement with the enemy. Come on. That could be unsaved people who refused, even if they know or understand or feel God tugging at their heart, they just won't give it up. They didn't turn to him. Okay, it could be saved people who think they know everything or they just won't be corrected. They won't listen to God. They won't listen to wise counsel. It could be that even. Okay, so these sentences were being handed down and it's more and more exposure in the body of Christ. Come on. I just feel like the Lord has said, "Ho, oh, we're on a ride. Come on. We're on a ride as the bride of Christ. And it's like we're on a, um, I saw us getting into a carnival ride. All of us. And it's like we all sat down on this long uh, roller coaster ride, but it's not doing any kind of roller coastering. It's just like a train. And, um, but it's almost for like little kids. And he said, hold on tight. Woo! And look to your right, look to your left. You're about to see all kinds of things. And it would, he meant more exposure, more exposure. Okay. Um, and then I began to see. As he began to, again, as those Leviathans were fished out, as they were uh, crushed by the presence and the power of God, as love reigned and ruled in the ocean. Come on. As love began to reign and rule. Hey, Jordan. Hey there. Began to reign and rule in the lives of believers. Come on. And even unbelievers. 
guess what I began to see? I began to see an emergence of prophets. God kept calling them prophets. And I began to look at a lot of them. And I said, well, I don't know that I would call that a prophet. And the Lord said, well, who would know? And I said, well, you would know. You would know. Come on, the Lord would know. But I began to see people that we wouldn't think were prophets coming and birthing out of rocks, out from among rocks, out of hard ground, out of unsaved territory. Come on, out of the world. This was a massive onslaught of uh, birthings of from people who were unsaved suddenly popping out and being birthed saying, I choose Jesus, I choose Jesus. And if you look in the media, if you look at things that are going on, um, even in everything from uh, we've heard the uh, prophecies, hey there, Jordan, of the people in Hollywood and many other sports arenas and such getting saved, uh, mass numbers of people coming to Jesus or influential people in those on those mountains coming to Jesus. We've been seeing that recently. We've been seeing that. We've been seeing people we thought would never give it up for Jesus who've decided to lay down and come out against things like porn. Come on, they've come out against and, and said, we're not going to tolerate this and we're not going to tolerate tolerate that and we're not for this but we're for Jesus we're laying down the drugs we're laying down the alcohol and so it's like things that you know if people five years ago ten years ago had mentioned some of this it would have been hard to even though we believe God it would have been like well I don't know how that's gonna happen but it almost seems like overnight. It almost seems like because why? Something, when a woman is ready to give birth, it has, she has to ripen. Come on, she has to become ripe. Everything has to get ready. The doctors, if you are have ever had children or your wife has had children or someone you know, your brother, your sister, come on, not your brother, your sister has had children or whatever. Um, you, you know, the doctor will examine her and say the cervix is ripe. Come on, it has to ripen, it has to thin, it has to efface it. She has to dilate. Certain things have to take place all along the way. Come on, all along the way for her to give birth. But I began to see these prophets. The Lord called them that prophets because they're prophets on their mountains. They're prophets in their realm of influence. They're people who will hear God and they'll speak and be a voice for the Lord. They may not look like what we think, a prophet should look like. They're not going to look like the Old Testament priest who his whole life was dedicated from the time they were an infant until they were grown and became an operating priest in the temple as recognized as someone, you know, I think they had to be at least 30 or 33, maybe it was 33 years of age before they could be, you know, operating in that office. So it's like, you know, they're not going to look like that. Hey, Prophet Robert. Thank you, Jesus. They're called the unlikelies that are coming home. It was unlikely that they should ever turn to the Lord. It was unlikely. Come on. Many of them are wealthy, have great money. And what does the word say? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a wealthy individual to enter the kingdom of God. And yet, look at what God has done. You can't say people did it. Most of these, it was a transformation overnight. Many people sowed seeds in their life, but no one person per se can be credited with the unlikelies salvation. Come on, they were the unlikelies, the most unlikely to ever enter into the kingdom of God. And yet here they are, yet here they are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Who fished them out? Surely the Spirit of the Lord has done this thing. Surely it is God. Lord, we praise you right now. We praise you for these things. Woo! Now these ones, because of who they are, where they've been, and what they've been through, come on, they've done all kinds of things, good, bad, and whatever. Come on, probably some worse things than any of us could imagine. And yet, I will tell you this, they're bold, they refuse to relent, and they won't back down. Those very things that Satan thought would destroy them or keep them back or never let them in. Come on. Come on. Those are the very things now that is facilitating and pushing them and ushering them in and they're riding the tops of tsunamis they're riding the tops of tsunamis they refuse to relent they won't back down they're bold in the lord they're surrounded by fire they will not cut out sit down or shut up there's nothing that can buy them come on they can't be bought they were bought in the past they came out of being bought but in a word they recognize anymore Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
They are the ones that the Lord is calling because uh, they're birthing. They're the water from the rock. Come on. They were out among the rocks in the thorny, dry places. They were out in the field that was so full of rocks. People said that field cannot produce. But look at what God can do. God is supernatural. He can make what you're, you're looking at. Some of you are looking. There's somebody on here right now. You're looking at your teenager going, they cannot. I don't see how they're coming back to Jesus after all this. I don't see how their, their life is so gone off track. What is going to happen here? I'm telling you, God is bringing people home out of the, the field that looks like it is filled with rocks. It looks like it would never produce. It would take a miracle to get all those rocks out of there and make that dirt fertile again. And yet they're birthing out of the rocks. Come on. God is doing a thing that would have taken people decades, hundreds of years. Come on, we could have never done it. God is doing it in the blink of an eye. He's turning your relatives around. He's bringing them up and out of whatever they were in. In Jeremiah 16 and uh, 16 through 18... Oh, I don't think this is... I think I ran these scriptures together. And one of them is Jeremiah 19, I think. No, it's not. Never mind. Jeremiah 16, 16 through 21. I love this scripture here. When you first read it, it seems a little bit scary, like God's destroying people. But when we look at the past events, when we look at past prophecies, when we hear what God is currently saying, the now, when we're seeing what's birthing out, when we see down the road what God is proclaiming and what God is saying, come on. It makes uh, sense in a context where when God is talking here about destroying and calling out, he's talking about calling the people out of the world and destroying the devil that they were hooked to hooked with, lined up with, come on, that thing that was their sugar daddy or sugar mama in the world, it, God's destroying that thing. Alexa, decrease volume to one. I want to read this in Jeremiah 16 and 16. It says, Behold, I will send for many fishermen. Are you one of the fishermen of the Lord? I'm telling you, God has many fishermen. Not a single, it's not a single fisherman. That everybody can point their finger to and say, that guy right there just led thousands to Jesus. There are things like that that have happened. But in this season, in this situation, it's look at all the fishermen. There may be key pivotal people, but it's not a person, but it's people. Multiple individuals that planted seeds that are fishermen who are God's using to fish these ones out of the sea. Says the Lord, and they shall fish them. And afterward, I will send for many hunters. Ooh. Come on, a fisherman stands up in the skies and the heavenlies or out on the uh, shores and the banks and they cast their reel. They got to be real quiet. They got to be real stealthy. Come on, they got to reel it in. They got to work it. Come on, you got to tug. Know when to tug and know when to back off. You can lose that fish if you don't know what you're doing. Come on, it comes with experience. But what about a hunter? A hunter can go places that the fisherman can't go. You don't dress like a fisherman if you're going to go hunting. You could end up dead. You wouldn't be prepared. Come on, a fisherman has a gun. A fisherman has a knife. A fisherman is on stealth mode. They camouflage themselves, but a, uh, a hunter does. But a fisherman, uh, he might wear some camouflage, but he's not too camouflaged. The fish, they're in the water. They're not, you know, they almost could care less at what's on the other end. It's the hook and what's going on with the line and the hook. That is really the most important thing. Um, and he says, But I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. Hunters are going in. Come on, it's new, 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 new November. I love that, Sharon. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. They're coming out of the holes of the rocks. They're coming out. I began to see when God showed me that they were birthing out of the rocks, it looked like they were coming out of these little tiny, um, it almost looked like pores in the skin. They were popping out of these rocks like that. They were being squished out of a rock. And I thought, well, that's almost painful. <laughs> Come on. Because some of the birthings, it was uh, hard. It was, uh, they were squeezed. They were squeezed just right by the Lord, and then they birthed. Come on, God knew how hard to squeeze them, where to put the pressure. 
what it would take, where his love would be there surrounding. Come on. Come on. Sherry, that's, that's right. Yes. Now, in verse 17, it says, For my eyes are on all their ways. They are not hidden from my face, nor is their iniquity hidden from my eyes. And first I will repay double for their iniquity and their sin. Who's he's going to repay? If we look at this verse, sometimes you can read this and think, Oh dear, God's going to punish me. But see, if you've repented, God's not going to repay you double in some type of discipline or judgment if you've repented. This is, you're going to get that double Come on, you're getting double for all that trouble. Repay double for their iniquity, for all the sin you had to walk through, for all the crud the devil put you through. You're getting that double. Come on, you're getting paid back. Repay double for their iniquity and their sin. Because they have defiled my land. Who defiled the land? But if you have come into repentance, come on, if you've come out of whatever, then it's the devil that the Lord does what to? He, he has his eye on the enemy. And he recognizes that the enemy defiled the land. They have filled my inheritance. What is my inheritance? The Lord's inheritance is us. Jesus went to the cross. And he looked ahead. And he stayed on the cross and didn't come down. Until he had finished and gave up his life and strength. For the inheritance he knew he would gain, which is us. We are the inheritance. And so when you read this from that standpoint, right here where it says, They have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable idols. This is the Lord angry at the enemy, angry at the devil, going after what tried to destroy you, what tried to destroy them. The Lord is going after what gave you the idea to have an idol. What gave you whatever the issue is. Whatever caused you to have this. Verse 19. O Lord, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles shall come to you. And this is the part right here. The Gentiles. That means the people out in the world. Will come to you from the ends of the earth and say, Surely our fathers have inherited what lies. They begin to see, I've been lied to. Even my fathers were lied to. They inherited lies, worthlessness, and unprofitable things. They begin to recognize all that they have is unprofitable. Without Jesus, they have nothing. The money doesn't matter. The whatever it is doesn't matter. Without Jesus, they have nothing. In verse 20, will a man make gods for himself which are not gods? Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is the Lord. This is a promise right here that you can quote over your family and expect that the Lord is giving you in Jeremiah 16, verses 16 through 21, that they're coming out. They're coming out of where they were, the dry place, the place of the uh, demonic fire, the place of ignorance, the place of rebellion, the place where they were uh, waylaid. Uh, you just have to keep believing. But recognize that there are signs in the earth when you are seeing people who we all thought would never come to Jesus. They were the unlikelies, the most unlikely. Come on, they were the unlikelies of all unlikelies, and yet they're coming to the Lord. There is hope for yours yet. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up. Amen. I like that, Prophet Robert. He said, a return to the standard of holiness in this season, his standard of holiness. Come on, the Lord has a standard of holiness, and he is indeed calling people to that. I do want to thank Laura. Laura Walmack. She gave me this when I was in the Gulf Coast during the missions trip. Um, it's a hoot. It's so cute. It's got this owl. The owl is winking, saying, hey there. I like it. It's a cool cup on that side as well. But it says, life is a hoot. Mm. But there's that fire. It's descending on you. It's descending on me. It's descending on all of us. Thank you, Jesus. So everything that y'all have given to me, thank you so much. I do appreciate that. 
Lord God, we just thank you right now. I want us to agree for right now, the people in the Philippines. Thank you, Laurie. A lot of people um, have been suffering, lots of suffering from the earthquakes in the Philippines, the devastation that was there. Um, buildings have collapsed. People have been displaced. Hey, Callie, people have been displaced. People have been um, just terrified. You know, it's bad enough to lose your home, and it's bad enough to be outside if the sun is shining, and it's a decent temperature. But to be outside, um, you know, among the elements, you don't know what the weather's going to be like, uh, and then you can't go to your neighbor's house because their house was destroyed too. Come on. Come on. Volker says the last thing you wanted to do was to become a Christian, but God took over. Wow. Thank you, Lord, for doing that. Thank you, Jesus. You know, and I had the stupid, the stupid months or whatever when I was in college, and it's like, praise the Lord that he kept me through that. Come on. Hey, Bradley. Thank you, Jesus. 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 And for those of you who don't know, we have moved to Shreveport, Louisiana. Hey, Donna. <clears throat> we are in Shreveport, Louisiana. It is awesome. It is beautiful here. Um, it's the new prayer house. You can scroll down my timeline and check out the new prayer house. Um, pictures. There's a video. I did a couple of videos. Um, part one and part two just gives you a little bit more about it. And then on Tiffany Blackwell Ministries page, you can scroll down. There's also a prayer house video on there, a different one. That just talks more about the testimony of biblical principles of financial, for financial success. I didn't get so much into uh, some of the stuff we all already know. In order to have a harvest, you have to uh, sow. Come on, you have to be a giver. Um, I didn't focus mostly on that because that's talked about so often. I focus more on the faith aspects um, because I want y'all to have faith. I want you to believe God um, and don't just think that although I am special in God's eyes, I'm not more special than you. That if you work the kingdom principles, if you start decreeing and declaring over yourself, you're going to get the very things not the exact same things that I have, but whatever God has promised you, that's what you're going to get. Come on, that's what you're going to get. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Amen. Prophet Robert said most of us were one day called an unlikely. Well, this is the rise of the unlikelies. The unlikeliest of all unlikelies. Okay, you guys. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Does anybody need healing on here? I just feel like the Lord is saying healing. I was um, just now talking to the Lord, and I was like, well, I want to start giving some prophetic words to people. And, I, you know, he has a sense of humor, and he said, oh, so you'd like to steer me where I'd like to go? And I said, well, no. <laughs> he said, what about healing? And I said, well, I'll ask. <laughs> Who needs healing on here? Come on. Come on. I don't tell the Lord what to do. Come on, if I'm an axe in the hand of the Lord, I don't tell the Lord's hand where to throw the axe, where to hit, you know, where to swing me. Your eyes, that's right, Kimberly. We come into agreement with you right now. And whatever diagnoses the doctors have put on you, we erase that, eradicate that, and command that to go back into the enemy's camp. We bless you with the blood of Jesus. We bless you with health. We thank you right now, Lord God, that any and all blind spots are gone. Any and all issues with eyes are reversed to where it is. This is the year of 2020 vision. Come on. Prophets are decreeing and declaring that. Um, one of the first places I heard that probably was Prophet Dalen John Coleman. Um, Y'all can follow his ministry. Um, he's also got this wonderful book that he's got coming out. Um, I know Jonathan Stidham, Apostle Jonathan Stidham, and Prophet Dalen John Coleman, they've got two really cool books that have come out. Um, one is on Sears by Apostle Jonathan Stidham, and um, the other, I think it's Seer Activations or something, and the other one is Prophet Dalen John Coleman. It 
50 something. Um, I wish I had the title of the book. I apologize for not knowing that right off the top of my head. But um, it talks about character. You can't say you're a prophet and you've been somebody and didn't even know anything and you've just been here for two years and then you've not been tested and tried. Come on. Prophets are tested and tried. I'm just going to say. Okay? That's where your character is built. We just speak right now. Any type of uh, back issues, neck issues, spinal injury, whatever. Dallas, we command that to go right now in Jesus' name. I'm loving seeing my redemption people on here. From when I was at Redemption with y'all, I love y'all. Um, we just command your neck to straighten, to be healed and whole, strengthen supernaturally, even the muscles. You know, sometimes people are like, well, God will heal me, and then I'll have to get all the muscles built back up and stuff. Well, do you believe that God, you know, what about those people that jump up and out of wheelchairs? Come on, they got muscle tone and strength. In the blink of an eye, they wasn't using it for years, and suddenly they're walking on it. They, you know, it's not suddenly they were repaired, and then they have to build up their walking and their strength over months or something. Come on, God, in the instant, in an instant. I received that for my own self right now in Jesus' name. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Vicki, we take authority over respiratory infection right now. Right now, in Jesus' name. If I've called your name out, Dallas, um, that neck and back, do something you couldn't do earlier. Move your neck, move your back. Do something you could not earlier and let us know how it feels. Let us know if that feels better. If you feel the anointing of God right now, like I am lit on fire right now. I'm just ablaze. I, I just, I even see spiritually there's like a fire between me and y'all. There's like a flame. I'm in a flame. Uh, I'm just in a flame. Thank you, Jesus. But let us know if you feel the anointing. Put that on here so people will be um, woo, encouraged. Encouraged. Uh, Prophet Robert says he's got a fire that shoots, shot down his lower back. God is touching someone's back right now. Amen. Amen. I claim that for Dallas. Come on. Amen. We command supernatural weight loss, Volker, and inner healing. Amen. Depression be gone in the name of Jesus. We take authority over depression and diabetes. You are not allowed to be here in the lives of believers. We don't, we just disallow you. Jesus hung on the cross for that. I see somebody taking the Lord's Supper. If you feel like that word was for you, literally get a cracker, get you some juice. And just drop down on your knees anywhere you can, even if you got to go to, um, and you might not want to get on your knees, but if you have to go, if you're at work and you want to get into a bathroom stall, just, um, just bow your head respectfully. Do something that's just what you consider respectful before the Lord. But if you're in a bathroom stall, I don't recommend getting on your hands and knees beside a nasty toilet. But just do something respectful. And, you know, and as you're eating that cracker, just tell Jesus, I thank you for how, come on, for how, you allowed your body to be mangled and abused for me. So I'm healed now. And you eat that in faith. And that infuse you right now in Jesus' name. And you drink that juice. And you say, your blood's forgiven me of my sins. That means my generational sins. I inherited some junk and that the bloodline is gone between me and that. Come on, your blood has covered that. It speaks louder than whatever my relatives said and did. And it even is my own personal sins, junk I did on purpose or by accident. You cover my ignorance. You cover my rebellion. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, how wonderful. Volker says, filling the anointing, good perfume. <laughs> Jennifer says, she does that all the time at work. Amen. I agree with that. Prophet Robert said he sees blood issues being made pure and cleansed right now. We agree with that in the mighty name of Jesus. Laurie, amen. We take authority over any forms of hair loss. I really feel like the Lord is saying vitamin deficiency. You know, there's stuff he does supernaturally and then there's stuff in the natural. Eat better. Eat less. Eat better. Make certain that you're getting the proper nutrients. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm looking back through the comments to see. Oh, I love 
this Donna Livernoose Donna uh, Donna she just got healing on breathing while typing <laughs> Woo! Jesus we thank you Wow Donna that is amazing that is amazing Wow Wow thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. I'm looking back through some of the comments. We don't want to miss that. What a blessing. Hey, Jennifer. Parks. Whew. I'm trying to scroll down to see the comments. There we go. Wow, I love that. I love it. Hey, Sandra. Hey, darling. Hey, Lakeisha. Amen. Such healing. So Donna, she just got healed. She was typing um, about having a breathing issue, and God healed her as she was typing it out. He healed her. Kathleen, let us know what you're feeling right now in your body. Do you feel better? Kathleen, let us know. If you're still on here, let us know what you're feeling in your back, your neck, your hip, and your shoulder. Do something you could not do earlier. Do something you could not do earlier. My shoulder just got healed. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Wow. We just say your hormones are lined up. Jesus doesn't have hormonal issues, and neither do you, because you have the blood of Jesus. That means you've got the bone marrow of Jesus. You've got the DNA of Jesus. You've got the hormones of Jesus. You've got the organs of Jesus. That's what I quote over myself and body almost like all the time, you know? Look in the mirror. You see things you don't like. You start decreeing and declaring, wait a minute, Jesus doesn't have that. I don't have it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we, we thank you for everybody on here that's been healed. But somebody testify, get up and do something you could not do earlier. And that means, it may mean having to move a part of your body that was painful before. I've told people who were like, they, you know, they would come up, they could barely stand on their feet. People got them standing on their feet or whatever. And they said, I can't walk. And I'm like, uh... God has just healed you. Step out in faith and start walking. And they're like, did, I, did you hear me? I said, I'm in pain and can't walk. And I said, no. I said, you step out in faith and watch all the pain will disappear. And this man literally started walking. He took one step and he took another. And I was talking to him. He was ignoring me because he was in shock. He was in a state of shock. He was in a state of shock because it was working. Come on, his faith. As he stepped out and obeyed in that corporate setting, God took all the pain away. Come on, he was able to walk without pain. Walk without fear of that pain. Amen, Travis. We take authority over high blood pressure. Panic button, panic mode, you got to go in Jesus' name. I felt that leave, Travis. I felt it leave. I'm telling you. It was like um, generational uh, panic is not quite the right word, but it would be like stress. Um, blood pressure brought on due to life circumstances and stuff throughout the generations, you know. Um, and so it was like almost like I saw a button called panic mode. Not that you panic or things like that, but it was something generational. I felt that thing literally slide away in Jesus name so I can't wait to see that manifest thank you God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus oh I want to see what Dallas said I just prayed as you spoke on taking the Lord's Supper I did and then I looked up which normally hurts but I feel no pain in my neck Woo! so Dallas has been healed come on Donna and Dallas have both been healed while on the video is that not wild y'all I'm loving this. I'm so glad I listened to Holy Spirit and did not just go into individual words for people. You know, because again, if I'm the axe or the pen or the microphone, who holds that? The hand of the Lord. He tells us where to go and what to do on these live streams. But if I could have gone ahead and, you know, because that gift is in operation, it would have worked. But God wouldn't have been in it. The gift would have just been doing its thing. But I don't want to be just gifted. I want to be anointed. Come on. I want him flowing through me. A wide, rushing, mighty river. 
So why do I share things like this? Why don't I try to make these videos look more professional? Why don't I try to make it look like you don't know what's going on in my head, my heart, my mind, um, and that I'm just, and I just speak and don't tell you what's going on in my mind or my heart? Because I want you to understand that the struggles, the thoughts you're having, what you're having, I have those same things. I can make it all look like, and I've done that before, and I'm sure I'll do it again, to where, you know, when I'm ministering to people and they need me to be confident in order for them to believe, I don't sit there going in my head going, Look, I'm, having, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the Lord on the inside going, I don't know if God can do this, Lord, this is on you. But those things are there. It's an internal thing. I have to put a check on it and tell it to shut up. So I try to let y'all know I have those same types of thoughts that you do, but I tell them to shut up and where they can go. And that's away from me. <laughs> Good morning, Kathy. I took steps to get off. Oh, wow. Shelly, that is wonderful. Amen. I believe God's delivering you from all anxiety, medication, and all anxiety right now in Jesus' mighty name. I love that. Okay, I like this too. Let's see. Prophet Robert says, someone with diabetes is being regulated right now. I saw the numbers return to normal. Please, if that's you, test and share. Somebody test your diabetes right now. If you know that it was high or should be high right now, just test it. The numbers are going to be normal. Sharon said she felt the high blood pressure thing leave her also. A generational thing with her. Wow. Kathleen says she's skipping. She's skipping. Oh my gosh, she's skipping. That's wonderful. I'm looking back through the comments. Wow. I just love this, you guys. Oh, thank you, Donna. Thank you. I miss you and so many of the other people in Greenville. Donna is a chaplain, among other things. That's just one of the few things that she does. She does a lot of different stuff for the Lord. Hey, Sarah. Shelly's going to test her blood sugar. God is great and greatly to be praised. Amen, Vicki. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. We take authority, Ashley Marie, right now over any forms of respiratory sickness. That stuffy nose, we just command that to inflammation go and sickness go. Go. Come on. Hey, Pam. Oh, Donna, thank you. She says, my smile's contagious. <laughs> you know what? That was a directive the Lord gave me. When my son died, he said, put a smile on your face. If there's just one thing that you can do, because it's like I had no strength, will, or anything to do anything. And he said, I am giving you just this one, basically like a commandment, one thing to do, and that's to smile at people. Go out into the marketplace and smile. Like if I needed to buy baking soda or if I needed to buy toothpaste, just go to a store, walk in, and everyone I saw just smile at them with the best, biggest, sweetest, most sincere smile I could muster up. Okay, Angela, we just take authority over fever, spirit of infirmity. No child should have a fever for eight days. We command that thing to leave her body in an instant right now. We take authority over it. We squash it. We command it. Go infirmity. You're not welcome in her body. We put the blood of Jesus on her. Uh, she's a little girl. Uh, we take authority right now in her life. We are uh, mature believers, and we put a, uh, a hedge of protection of not only God's anointing and fire around her, but the blood of Jesus. And we also place angels around her right now. They will grab that thing and chunk it. I, I saw like a strong man thing sitting in a chair beside her bed or wherever she's at. It was like I'm seeing angels. Um, it was like a wrestling, but it only lasted part of a second. And they have strong-armed it, got its arms behind its back, and they are plucking it up and out and away from her right now in Jesus' name.
126 after breakfast. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my goodness, you got the same message after your husband died, Sharon, to smile. I'm telling you, when God gives you a directive, it can seem like the most simple thing. But when we obey, it opens up an avenue. Sometimes I just try to tell people, you know, maybe I said yes a little more than you did, meaning maybe I obeyed a little more than you did when God said to do a thing. And I may have been saying on the inside, that's crazy. That doesn't make sense. That's insane. I don't know what about that. But it, I just, those thoughts were going on. The struggle was there. But what did I do? I kept walking saying, yes, Lord, and did whatever he said to do. You can be bold and still have fearful thoughts. It doesn't mean you're operating in fear or that you agree with that fear. Because your emotions, for instance, are like an ocean wave. Might be calm, might be peaceful, might be angry. Come on, but you don't have to be out there in the ocean on that wave riding it. You could be on the shore going, huh, inside of me, I'm feeling anger. Well, I'm not going to be an angry person. I'm not going to act on that anger. I'm going to pull away from that anger. I'm going to push that anger out onto a little dinghy boat, set it off in, at, in the sea away from me, and go, 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 you go. And now I need to figure out why am I angry? Uh, what triggered me? Um, Lord, help me with this. Lord, heal me. Don't let me defile your name or give you and Jesus a bad name by acting on any of that whatever. That comes with the maturity. That's the thing that I'm talking about when um, people will pop up and say they're a prophet and they've been a prophet two weeks. Well, honey, that comes with testing. You know, God called me a prophet when I was a three-year-old child. People called me a prophet even when, as a, a toddler when I was three years old. But I did not operate in that office. I did not function in the body of Christ as a prophet. Um, I think I was either 30 or 33 years of age before I was confirmed and operating in the office of a prophet in the body of Christ. Okay? Um, now, obviously, God could have done it to where not necessarily people recognized me. But, you know, God, Jesus grew in favor with God and with man. Not just with God. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pam, we take authority over heaviness. Um, I know what God is showing me right now, that heaviness that you felt in your body. I feel like the Lord is saying that that's a form of depression. Um, the enemy was trying to get in there. Um, and it's almost like um, tentacles from that thing crept in slowly. And you know why. You can think of a thousand reasons why different situations and stuff. Um, as to why it's been draining, you know. Um, and so we just command those tentacles to let go of you, to release you, to back up. We command angels to get between you and that um, draining spirit. It's, it's like a draining spirit and it's like a blanket that's not of God. So we just thank you right now for a peace blanket to come and descend on Pam and anyone else on here that needs that right now in Jesus' name. I see joy coming to you, Pam. Joy. Happiness is based on circumstances, and joy is based on choices of just choosing to smile. When we wake up, choosing to smile regardless of what's going on in our lives. Amen. Amen. I agree with that, Ashley Marie. Productivity in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It can be, Angie. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. I'm seeing a chain link fence right now. Pam, and I'm seeing this is for Fiona as well as Pam. I'm seeing a chain link fence. God told me this word is for both of you. And anyone else on here that needs this, claim this. There's a chain link fence and it is between you and a wild mad dog. A wild mad crazy dog is on the other side of that fence. 
on the other side of that fence and it is trying to get through the fence. But I want to tell you, the fence is Jesus. The fence is the Lord. The fence is the anointing. The fence is the fire of God. The fence is the blood of Jesus. The wild, mad, crazy dog can't get through the fence. It can't come over to your side. It's a threat. It's an idle, useless threat. It cannot bite you. God's not going to let it rip you to pieces. God not, is not going to let it terrorize or shred you. You are not going to be destroyed. The devil is lying. And so we take authority over those lies. We take authority over those feelings. And I see the fire coming out of your mouth, coming out of my mouth and everyone on here. It's like we all breathed fire out of our mouths simultaneously. And the dog, the wild, mad, crazy dog just literally got burnt in its face, turned, put its back to the Lord was burned on its butt even, and fled away in defeat. And it got burnt so bad it knows don't come back to the fence again. Come on, don't come back to that fence again. You're going to get electrocuted. <laughs> come on, somebody. <laughs> God is so, so good. He's so good. Hey, Martha Ann. Good morning. You are so welcome, Fiona. I like what Prophet Robert said. He said, weeping may endure through the night, but joy comes in the morning. This is your morning, says the Lord. Mm, that's a good word. Here are some good things. This is some of the stuff that I had to do that's wisdom to get out of um, when I was in a rut, when I was depressed. There are different times in my life and different reasons for why that occurred. Um, but I had gone to visit my family doctor. I told him that I wasn't sleeping at night. I just, you know, I had an infant that was probably somewhere between five and six weeks of age, five to seven weeks of age. And the doctor gave me some great tips and pointers. And as soon as I began to do those things, I'm telling you, within three days, my sleeping was back to normal. Um, and like sleeping like I was a child again. You know, when you're a child, you just close your eyes, you wake up, it's morning, and you don't know what happened from the time you closed your eyes till you opened them. You don't toss, you don't turn, you don't, or if you do, you're unaware of it. You know, as a child, I remember being put in the bed like this and waking up with my head way down here or something crazy or even in the floor and be like, ah. and I was not aware of it. Um, and so anyway, he said, in the mornings, get up and purposefully eat in a room that the sun is shining through the window to where you get lots of sunlight in your eye first thing in the morning. Take vitamin D first thing in the morning. Lots of vitamin D. I take, now you have to work yourself up to this, otherwise you'll, you'll end up with, your body will go into um, an immune response, not to the vitamin D, but to fighting anything that's in your body. It'll like almost overreact. Um, start, I, you know, obviously was getting about 800 vitamin D a day, but that wasn't enough. Um, I bought 1,000 milligram tablets. I mean, gel, like squishy soft gels. Um, I personally take 10 to 15,000 units a day, which is anywhere between 8 to 15 of those vitamin D pills. I just dump them in my hand, pop them in my mouth. But here's what happens. You have to work yourself up gradually to that. Like, take 800, take 1,000, 2,000, and do that for a week or two, and then work yourself up to that. Because I just popped a bunch in my mouth one day, and I'd only been, say, at a 2,000 level, and I took about 10,000. I immediately started having a histamine reaction. I started feeling achy in my body, and I was like, what is going on with me? Well, my body decided um, it was going to try to destroy and kill anything that was coming at it. Instead of, it, it was just um, overreacting. It wasn't a bad thing, per se, but I, I, you know, who wants a trippy nose? Because it decided dust and pollen that I normally had in the nose every day, that that, that day it decided you're not going to, be up in that nose. I'm going to react to you. I'm going to, but if you gradually increase your dose, it, um, you're not going to have that reaction. You're not going to feel like you suddenly got the flu. <laughs> oh goodness. Debbie said she was awake for 33 hours straight not long ago and she couldn't sleep even though she was tired. So getting that sunlight in the mornings, we just take authority over that Debbie and say you can sleep in Jesus name. Waking up every morning at the same time, going bed every night at the same exact time. These are things that help getting in a routine, cutting out all the lights, 
30 minutes to an hour and a half. I try two hours before I go to bed to dim all the lights in the house to almost nothing. Um, it got so bad one time after one of the births of my children and I knew what the issue was that I literally was just, I had a lamp, uh, a lantern, one of these kerosene little glass pretty lanterns lit. I wouldn't even have a light on in the room. And it did help. And then taking melatonin at bedtime, take three to five milligrams before you go to bed. Three to six milligrams. Um, but do it 30 minutes to an hour before you want to go to bed. That can help. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because God wants us to be smart spiritually, but he also wants us to be smart in the natural. I can decree, decree and declare health on me. And yet, if I have a food full of fridge that I'm not, um, a fridge full of food I'm not eating, or I have access and money to get food, but I refuse to eat, then that's not being smart. That's damaging your body on purpose. But if you can't get to food, God will protect you. Meaning, if you're in a place where you can't afford or you're in a climate or a region and there's starvation going on, God will sustain you in that. But if you have access to food and you're not eating properly, that can result in not sleeping well. Come on. Exercise. Get as much exercise as you can in the mornings. Now for me, this is going to sound absolutely crazy, but if I go to the gym and work out for like an hour, 35 minutes to an hour before bedtime, and then I drive home, now, um, and then go to bed about 30 minutes later, you know, get dressed, go to bed, I sleep like awesome. Some people can't do that. Some people, if they were to exercise at the gym before going to bed, they'd be up all night. So some people like to put their exercise routine first thing in the morning, okay, before they go to work and stuff, and it helps them throughout the day. Now, I tried exercising before going to work or before starting my day when I had, say, the cleaning business. Oh, no, honey. I was spent. I couldn't do nothing else. It was like I couldn't focus. I, I was like, mm, mm So I just learned, for me, learn your routine. Learn your routine, what hurt, works for you. But I hope y'all um, are blessed. And I just, if this has blessed you today, I would appreciate it if you would love to sow into the ministry. Um, we have PayPal, Cash App, Messenger. <gasps> and, um... I do want to show y'all, y'all are on here, and I do want to show some of y'all what we've done so far here at the prayer house. I hope you don't mind me doing that. Alexa, turn on the living room. Okay, she turned on more lights. I'm going to turn it around so you can see some stuff. Um, it's getting there. It's getting there. We can praise and worship and have lyrics now on the screen. Um, that will help, especially with new songs. I'm always into new songs and getting new songs. And I've noticed when people come for praise and worship, we haven't held our first service here yet, but when they do, people are just like, I don't know the words of that song. And sometimes they stand back because they don't know what to sing. Hey, Lindsay. And so um, it's getting there. It's getting better. Everything's kind of getting more lived in. Um, I still have pictures down. I didn't get those on the walls. I think Kathy's going to come and help me with that Saturday. Let me see if I can turn this on. It's really pretty. The alarm is still on. Hopefully, I'll remember. So, it's so cute. This scripture right here is, For he will give his angels charge over you to uh, guard you in all of your ways. To keep you. Psalm 91, 11. Um, this is a mirror that one of our covenant partners gave us. It's literally, it weighs a hundred and something pounds. It's That's why it's sitting on the ground. It is... Um, very, very, very heavy, but very beautiful. Um, we, like I said, we did get the books unpacked. We're working on the office still. Um, I know y'all are reminding me, those students who are being ordained, licensed, and certified, some of y'all still need yours mailed uh, out. Um, so, and again, I don't have stuff on the walls like I would like to yet, but it's getting there. It's getting there. These are the new appliances that we had to get the day we moved in. Um, this room out there is going to be more for the prayer house. We're going to have more of the music, um, keyboard. Uh, we're going to have the walls set up for the flag of Israel, flag of Jerusalem, and different um, setups in there so we can have different type uh, shows, uh, studio type stuff. 
Again, uh, the power got cut out. Uh, I think it blinked off yesterday or the day before. Um, so we've got a beautiful station here. It's going to be easy for people to make their coffee, their tea. And another thing I'm going to start doing is having uh, retreats here. I think um, nice weekend retreats for married couples. Um, Alexa, turn on the prayer house, prayer room. Yes. I'll turn it. There she goes. She got it on. So it's just, it's just really really pretty. This is this is an area out here. We're gonna have outdoor seating. We have a fire pit already. It's really cool. It's got tile all around it. Um, it's covered. It's cemented. It's just really beautiful in here. Really gorgeous. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's really gorgeous. I like this. I think this came from, I think this is something that um, Apostle Jojo Dawson, I think this is something he is ministry designed. It says prophetic dreams happen here. Um, one of y'all mailed that to me. Um, y'all also mailed us all of these oils. Um, everything from anointing oils, from different ministries to essential oils and all kinds of different things like that. So in the oil from the, Bible in Dalton right here. And this is from, I think, an island off the coast of Georgia, a ministry there. But um, it's just really nice. And the books and the different things. Oh, this is Prophetess Carrie Mitchell. She actually designed this cup here. It says, Unprecedented Signs and Wonders. You know, um, someone drew this for me at a service. It's an angel. Um, and so out there is another room and it has all of the plants and things in it. I have not situated the plants or anything like that. This room, I really haven't done much with it. I just threw my plants out here because I didn't know where to put them all yet. <laughs> so it, it's just gorgeous. It is, um, my building, it actually, it's huge. It's a huge building out there. It's got a cement walkway all the way to it, all the way up into it. It's just almost like a mini house, you know? <laughs> it's like a mini house. And then there are other rooms, um, guest rooms and stuff like that. So this is a place that's going to be um, used. People can come here and speak. Um, we can have services here. And they're going to be prayer services because um, even though I'm registered as a church, you know, I actually attend a church. Um, so, I, it's not the same thing as a church. It's a prayer house. So, I can't wait for us all to get together. Um, I'm, I know I'm going to have two events. One near Thanksgiving and one near Christmas. So, um, but then in January, it's going to be more, you know, I'll have more, probably go to weekly services, weekly prayer things, that kind of stuff. Um, but for right now, it's probably going to be more like monthly, you know, a service in November, a service in December. We're halfway through, finally, our school classes. Um, we could have had this semester finished and started another eight weeks, but because of the moving, hey, Carly. Hey, Linda. Hey, Faith. And because of the moving and all, um, we took a few weeks off of school from doing the university, but now we're back up in full swing. But we're also, at the same time as that, we're going to be having a um, free prayer class on learning how to pray. Be more effective when you pray. That's one of the things in level one that everyone who's taken that class said, I wish you had more in it about even though we do talk about prayer and praying, um, they said they wish it was more in depth, more in depth. And yes, it's of course the relationship and such things like that. But oh, I love that. What did Prophet Robert say? He's such an sees an angelic presence through my home. They are covering your home. There is a new river flowing through as well. I see fresh waters. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Prophet Robert. 
Oh, yes. Ah, oh, that's right. Apostle Jennifer LeClaire, she also put out a new book, The Seared Dimensions. Yeah, that's a good one, too. And, y'all, I have so many different books that are in me that I need to write. And yet, right now, one of the things the Lord has given me a directive for, he just keeps saying, rest, rest, rest. Um, it's like I'm resting and recouping in him. I'm still doing a few things that he's asking me to do. Um, right now, we're still not going live every single morning. I mean, I could be wrong. He said go live this morning. He might tell me next week go live every morning. I don't know. We might be back on track. But um, he just was like, I need you to rest, refocus, rest, and focus, etc. I'm going to hop off here. I'll put that giving link on here so you can give um, and just support this ministry. If you want to be a monthly covenant partner, you can even do that. You can go to the website, tiffanyblackwell.com forward slash donate, and it'll let you do a one-time donation, or um, you can make it set it up monthly or whatever. But in January, we'll start, um, we're going to start doing the university another eight weeks. We're finishing up this eight weeks. We're going to go into that free prayer class. That's going to be the month of December. The only thing we ask for that is if those that can, who want to participate in the prayer class, donate something, anything. And if you're already someone who donates to the ministry, um, then just, you know, I'm going to make it to where you can join. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I love you guys. I'm going to hop off of here. And y'all are awesome. You're wonderful. We had so many healings this morning. I love it when God does stuff like that. Go back and watch the video, or if you hopped on here for the replay, don't forget that God can heal you even on the replay. See you guys. I'll talk with you later.